Good morning, people of God. Last week, we talked about uh, it's never too late to change your state. This week, we're going to talk about the process that will elevate your state. The process that will elevate your state. So go ahead and let's go ahead and hit the little like button, hit the thumbs up. Let's go ahead and share this with somebody, call somebody, tell them to turn on YouTube, tell them to watch this broadcast. All right, let me pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord God, that you'll think through my mind, that you'll speak through my vocal cord. I pray, dear Lord God, that it's less of me and more of you. I ask, Father, that there's none of me and all of you. I declare that this word will go forth uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen, and amen. So the process that will change your state, let's go ahead and get into this thing. All right? Praise God. All right. Now, so I want to start here. Uh, the first couple of scriptures are going to be like a sort of like a review of where we were last week. So I'm going to start off here at first, uh, James 5.16, like we did last week. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let me say that again. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, so last week we talked about what makes you righteous. What makes a man righteous? It says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Well, what makes you righteous is not your behavior, not because you give to St. Jude's, you give to, you know, charities and you, you're tithing. Like that, that, that doesn't make you righteous. Righteous people do that act, but that doesn't make you righteous. What makes you righteous is the blood of Jesus. What makes you righteous is what Jesus did, not what you do. What he, Jesus did, not what you do. You are righteous because of what Jesus did. That's what makes you righteous. And the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much, especially one that knows he's righteous. You see, just because you might have had some shortcomings, just because you might, you might have a little smoked a little smoke, or you might have a little drink a little drink, or something to that nature, or you had an argument, or whatever it is, or, you know, you had something foul came out your mouth, whatever the case may be, that does not affect who you are. You are righteous if you are born again because Jesus made you righteous and God declares you are righteous, not by your acts, but by his act, Jesus' act. That's what made you righteous. Now, when you do sin, that's your state where you are right now. I mean, you might be in a sinful state, but you're still righteous. You might have some things going on in your life that don't need to be there, but you're still righteous. Why is that? Because God called you righteous. Let every man be a liar. Let God be the true and every man be a liar. So don't let somebody say, oh, look at that person. They can't, they call themselves saved. They can't be saved acting like that. No, that does not determine who they are. The word, <coughs> excuse me, the word of God determines who they are. So let me go forward. First John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is a review from last week. We're going to pick it up after the scripture. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So now you've been cleansed of unrighteousness, so you're righteous. You go to God, Father God, forgive me. I did this. I repent. Means you, you means you have a change of heart, change of mind, change of action. You don't intend on doing it anymore. Doesn't mean you're gonna fall, not gonna fall, but you don't intend on going out sinning, right? You are not what righteous. You've been cleansed from unrighteousness. You are righteous. You are righteous. You are righteous. You are not righteous because of what you did or what you didn't do. You are righteous for what Jesus did, and He declared you righteous. Glory to God. So now, once again. When any acts you do that's against the will of God, against the word of God, that is a state that you're in right now. You got to get delivered from that state so you can hit, uh, uh, walk in your stance. What's your stance? I'm standing as the righteousness of God. That's who I am. I am the right. That's where I stand. I stand in righteousness. After all you can do to stand, stand therefore, stand therefore where? In righteousness. 
And to all you do, you can t to stand. Because if you're not standing in righteousness, the devil will accuse you. The devil will steal your, right, your righteous thoughts. And then your, your prayers will not avail much. Because God doesn't operate with doubt and unbelief. And if you don't think you're righteous, you have doubt and unbelief. So therefore, what? It will hinder who you are in Christ Jesus. Now, let's keep going. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Thank you for the word, for the word, for the word. Okay, now watch this. <coughs> First John 2, verse 1 and 2. My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. You have an advocate with the Father. You got someone speaking about you, looking out for you, standing over you like a lawyer, saying, oh, wait, wait, no, he's one of ours. He's righteous. She's righteous. She's the righteousness of God. They've received my blood. They've received my sacrifice. they receive who I am. They're righteous even though they sin. Glory to God. We have a lawyer. We have an advocate in Jesus Christ, and he is the... Um, propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but for the sins of the whole world glory to God and let me tell you something you don't have to be like the whole world because they might not receive the forgiveness of Jesus but let me tell you something if you want your prayers to avail much if you want to be able to do much in the things of God if you want to stand in the righteousness of God you have to realize and recognize that I'm righteous because of what he did. Hallelujah. I know what I did wasn't the right thing to do. But what he did was the right thing for me. Because it cleansed me with what I did. Glory to God. Thank you. He did it over 2,000 years ago. So my past sins are forgiven. Present sins are forgiven. Future sins are forgiven. And that's just how it is. Somebody said, no, you, you're giving people license to sin. I'm not over yet. You stick with me. And let's see if you want to sin or if you don't want to sin. Hallelujah. All right. John 19. John 19. No, excuse me. Uh, yeah, John 19, 28 through 30. Now, what I want to do here is I want to get an understanding uh, of our goal, of our aim, because we don't want to live in sin. See, where our stance is righteous, our state is unrighteous. But we got to stand in our state. So what we have to do is we have to get our, I mean, in our stand. We have to stand in our stance. We have to get our state to line up with our stance. We have to get our state to line up with our stance. Let's get full understanding of what we're trying to do. Watch this. John 19, verse 28 through 30. As in this manner, Jesus knowing, now this is when Jesus was on the cross. He'd been beaten with a cat of nine tails, put on a crown of thorns, whipped and so forth and so on. And this, and after this, Jesus knowing that all things were accomplished, now accomplished, all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said I first. Now there was a set of, there was a set of vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon his up and put it to his mouth. Now watch this. And when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost glory to god now what just happened is a greek word called uh let me make sure i pronounce this thing right to tell tell esta let me spell it time to tell us to tell us it's spelled t-e-t-e-l-e-s-t AI to tell us time. What does that mean? It's complete. It is finished. What is finished? Jesus just got finished getting whooped. Jesus just got finished being nailed to the cross. 
Jesus just got finished being crucified. Jesus said it is finished, came out of Jesus' mouth, and he gave up the ghost. What was finished? Glory to God. Your salvation was finished. That's what was finished. Not just so you can be saved. We're going to see that in a minute. Not just so you can be saved, because I thank you, God, that you are saved. But not just so you can be saved, but so that you can be healed. What? Healing was now available to you. Why? Jesus finished it on the cross. Yes. Prosperity is now available to you. Why? Jesus finished it on the cross. Yes. Uh, also, deliverance. Uh, somebody needs to say deliverance. Deliverance is now available to you. Why is that? Because he finished it on the cross. Your safety, your soundness, your preservation, your healing, your prosperity, your deliverance was now finished. Glory to God. He established it on the cross. Hallelujah. So that you can walk in it. Now, while now your deliverance is established, so what does that mean? You don't have to stay stuck in a state of sin, but or unrighteousness. But you can change your state of unrighteousness, like your stance of righteousness. Now you are righteous, but you have the ability to get your uh, righteousness in your act. Now that Jesus made you righteous, now that God said you are righteous, you have the ability to get your righteous act. You can operate in righteousness now that you are righteous. Because Jesus established it. Jesus made it. Jesus delivered us. Not, uh, he delivered us from the curse. We do no longer have to be in sin. We no longer have to drink a little drink. We no longer have to smoke a little smoke and, and sleep around all that kind of mess. We don't have to live like that because Jesus delivered us on the cross from that. And now we have something to go for. We can aim for righteousness in our behavior. Aim for righteousness in all the things that we do. We can let, act righteous now since we are righteous because this, he called us righteous. So if he called us righteous, we might as well go ahead and act that way. We might as well go ahead and act that way, people of God. Yes. On the cross, he said, it is finished. It is finished. It is complete. I've done what I had to do to deliver you from your sin, deliver you from your cigarettes, deliver you from your alcohol, deliver you from your perversion, deliver you from that mess. I can you've been delivered. But just because he delivered us don't mean we received it. But we have to, it's time to receive it. Let's go forward. Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. He's redeemed us from the curse. He set us free, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Jesus took the curse for you, so you no longer have to operate and the curse of unrighteousness. Glory to God. Because righteous is blessed to be righteous. And God put you in a state of, in a stance of righteousness. You're standing in righteousness. <coughs> but now that state that you're in is part of the curse. And Jesus has delivered you from that curse. And it's time for you to receive your deliverance in Jesus' name. Deliver it from cigarettes. Deliver it from alcohol. Deliver it from mess. It's time to go and be blessed. It's time to go ahead. It's time to go ahead. It's time to go ahead. Hallelujah. John 10 and 10. The thief come not for to steal, to kill, to destroy. I am come that they might have life. That is being saved. Jesus came that you may be saved so you don't have to go to hell. He came so you don't have to go to hell. You can go to heaven. And when you receive him, you go, now you're on your way to heaven, right? Well, watch this. That I might have life, and that I might have a how? More abundantly. What does that mean? That means now I can have life uh, like God has it. I don't have to have life full of sin. I don't have to have life full of unrighteousness. I don't have to have life with, with drugs and alcohol and all that kind of foolishness. I can have the abundant life. I can live good, hallelujah. I can live uh, free from sickness. Healing is available to me now. Prosperity is available to me now. <clears throat> Deliverance is available to me now from all that stuff 
that the enemy trying to keep me involved with so he can make me think I'm cursed instead of blessed. Let me go forward. Romans 10. Now watch this. Let me show you this. Because now we need to know, well, if he delivered me from uh, my mess, I know I'm righteous, I'm saved. And so since I'm saved, I'm righteous. And if he delivered me from my mess, why am I still walking in the mess? Why am I still smoking cigarettes? Why am I still drinking uh, too much? Why am I still wanting to sleep around? Why? 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 Because you haven't... Let me show you why. Let me show you why. Because when I show you why, you'll know what to do to get out of it. Because we're thinking about the process of to be elevated from our state. Our sinful state. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever, you, you soever, is a whosoever. I am a whosoever. And I call upon the name of the Lord and I shall be saved and I am saved. Verse 10, verse 9 through 10. Watch this. Watch this now. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. You shall be saved. Thou shall be saved. <coughs> For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Wait, oh, 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 wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Romans 10. Okay, let me go 13 again. Watch this. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Somebody say shall be. Somebody say shall be saved. That's like show enough. You show enough going to be saved. Without a doubt, you'll be saved. Well, yes, for sure, for sure, you'll be saved. Now, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in the heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Somebody say, shall be again. Glory to God. Now watch this. For with the mouth, conf for with the heart, man believeth unto. Say, believe unto. Righteousness. Glory to God. I believe unto what righteousness. I'm righteous now. I call upon the name of the Lord. I am saved. With my heart, I believe unto Jesus. And I'm righteous now. With the heart, I believe unto righteousness. Now watch this. And with the mouth, with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Confession is made unto your healing. Confession is made unto your prosperity. Confession is made unto your deliverance from cigarettes, your deliverance from alcohol, your deliverance from sleeping around, your deliverance from acting unrighteous. How am I going to stop acting unrighteous? Glory to God. Yes, my stance is not going to change my state. How? Because I'm going to use my mouth and I'm going to call myself free from cigarettes, free from alcohol, free from drugs, free from sleeping around. I'm free, hallelujah. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Because with my mouth, see, with your heart you believe unto righteousness. Thou shalt, uh, and if you call upon the name of the Lord, thou shalt be saved. That's a done deal. Because it shall be, but with their mouth confessing us made unto my deliverance from drugs, my deliverance from alcohol, my deliverance from sleeping around. It shall be made unto why made unto? Because Jesus put it there. Now I got to make it. I got to take it. I got to receive it. I got to do something. Glory to God to receive it. Oh, I'm sick in my body. Well, healing's been available to me since Jesus died on the cross. How am I going to get my healing? I got to make it with my mouth. Glory to God. Now, uh, 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 um, deliverance has been available unto me. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Well, how am I going to be delivered? I have to make it with my mouth. I can't sit around thinking about it. I can't sit around uh, uh, wor worrying about it. I got to get in up with the program and with the, with the mouth confession is made unto your salvation, made unto your deliverance, made unto hallelujah. You have to use your mouth and there's no way around it. And you can't, you got to stop 
operating unrighteous when deliverance is made, when he did it on the cross. He said it's finished. No, his part is finished. Your part is started. His part is finished. Your part got started. His part is finished. Your part has got started. Psalms 45, verse 1. Watch this. My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My mouth is the pen of a ready rider. My mouth is the pen of a ready rider. What am I doing? I'm writing myself a new state, hallelujah. I'm writing myself a new life, hallelujah. I am elevating my state in Jesus' name. No longer do I smoke. No longer am I a drinker. No longer am I sleeping around. No longer am I walking in anger. No longer am I walking in unforgiveness. No longer. Why is that? Because my, with my mouth, confession is made unto righteousness, glory to God. So I'm going to have my stance in righteousness, and I'm going to make my state righteous when I start using my mouth. My mouth is the pen of a ready writer. Psalms 45, verse 1. I'm writing myself a new state. I'm writing myself. The devil wants you to say, oh, man, I can't quit doing it. I can't stop doing this. Oh, every time I want to stop, I... No. Call those things that be not as though they were. I'm delivered. I'm set free. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Jesus set me free over 2,000 years ago. I'm walking in my freedom. I don't care what happened last night. Glory to God, I'm a new creature today. Keep speaking it. Keep speaking it. Seed time of harvest time shall not, uh, shall not cease. It says that in uh, uh, Genesis 8.22. Day and night, summer, winter, summer, uh, uh, cold and heat. Seeds time and harvest time. Your tongue is a pen of ready writer. Your words are seeds. And I'm going to plant these seeds. And keep planting these seeds. And keep watering these seeds. And keep saying these seeds. And when you see me in a year or two down the road, you're going to see my status change. And I'm just like my stance. And I'm say, is that the same person? That's the same person. Glory to God. No. I'm a new creature in Christ. Created of infinite worth. Deeply loved and completely forgiven. Glory to God. To give you one more scripture and I'm through. One more scripture and I'm through. This will be it. Hebrews 2, verse 3. <coughs> How shall we escape? Escape what? That bad state. How are you going to escape that state? How can we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? How do we neglect salvation? With your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Don't use your mouth. That's what's wrong. You haven't been using your mouth. You heard about it 20 years ago. You're still not doing it. You heard about it 20 years ago. You're still not doing it. And the devil is counting on you not doing it. But people of God, I'm trying to encourage you because I want you to be delivered and I want you to act righteous now since you are righteous. I want your state to be just like your stance, the righteousness of God. So how should we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at first began to be spoken by the Lord, hallelujah, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. By them that heard him. People of God, it's time for us to elevate our state. Jesus gave you everything you need. It's not right for him to expect you to do good when he didn't give you what you need to do good. He gave you what you need. He gave you a word. He gave you a mouth. He gave you instructions. Somebody said, hey, I don't know. He didn't give me no instructions. He's giving it to you right now from the words of my mouth. Start speaking your deliverance. Start speaking your healing. Start speaking your prosperity. Start speaking your new state. In Jesus' mighty name. Well, people, I pray you got something about that word this morning. Glory to God. Now, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. I want to give you an opportunity to give. I want to pray over you. First, let me deal with those who are not born again. If you're not born again, you must. This is a must. The most important thing you'll ever do in your life. More important than your marriage. More important than buying a house. More important than your job. More important. This is your eternity we're talking about here. So, if you never see Jesus... If you're not born again, you don't know where you're going when you leave here, let me, let me give you a free ride. We're going to heaven. 
repeat this prayer after me. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to forgive me for all my sins. I declare Jesus came, died on the cross, said it was finished, made said salvation available to me, and he saved me. Jesus, come in my heart, be my Lord, be my Savior. Thank you for saving me this day. Praise God. Now, for the rest of us, before I uh, give you the opportunity to so, let me pray over you. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you take this word practically. The people under the sound of my voice take this word practically and apply it in their lives. And we'll see their state line up with their stance. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want to give you the opportunity to sow. Don't just hear, but sow. Hear and sow. Hear and and so, what happens? Now all of a sudden your need is met, uh, needed, uh, you have a need, it, it's met. You have a need, it's met. You have a need, it's met. Somebody said, I don't believe that. Well, you don't believe the word. Then you might as well not even worry about using your mouth because you don't believe the word. I don't know how you're going to believe for going to heaven, but you don't believe that he can uh, prosper you or take care of you and make sure your needs are met. It's time to stop believing God, people. It's time to start believing God. Now, there's several ways you can give. One is our cash app. That's the dollar sign, capital W, capital F, capital C, and ministries with a capital M. Let me give it to you again. Capital, a dollar sign, capital W, capital F, capital C, ministries with a capital M. Or you can write us a check, WFCM, P.O. Box 33, Jonesboro, Georgia, 30237. One more time. P.O. Box, WFCM, P.O. Box 33, Jonesboro, Georgia, 30237. Last but not least, you can call 770-477-8586, 770-477-8586. People of God, we love you. We thank God for you. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. We thank God for you. You have a blessed week, and we'll see you right here on next week's broadcast.